All right, so we finished collecting our gas. I've got a few bubbles in here. I'm going to tap on that, make sure we collect all those at the top. But I'm going to make sure that I don't bring the stopper that's down at the bottom of this, this uh, high-tech beaker we've got here. I'm not going to lift that out because you know what happens when we do that. Bring a glass of water up out of, out of water here all of the water comes out, air rushes in. We want to keep our hydrogen trapped up in here. Okay, this is our hydrogen gas. I'm going to turn my udiometer a little bit and make our measurements. First thing on your data table, you've got barometric pressure. Uh, barometric pressure, there's no measurement for that here. I've got a thermometer, I've got volume, we even got a ruler. For barometric pressure, you use, you guessed it, a barometer. Uh, but we don't have one that works well here, so a really good standby will actually use the barometric pressure right off of the weather channel. That will be on our whiteboard right at the front of the room when you go to make the, the data collection portion of this, this lab here. So the pressure of the air that's pushing down on the surface of this water will be on the board. Now that air is pushing down on this surface, We've got hydrogen gas pushing down on the surface of the liquid inside your udiometer. You can see that there is less pressure in the hydrogen than there is from the air because the air is winning. It's pushing the water up into our udiometer here. How much less is this pressure? Well, we don't have a good way of directly measuring it, but we can measure how high this water is inside the udiometer. So I'm going to take a ruler here and I'm sticking the zero mark of the ruler right down at the surface of the water. It's mostly water, a little bit of excess hydrochloric acid in there, so we don't want to take a bath in it just yet, all right? Measure how high this is. I've got, uh, this, this ruler measures in millimeters, some of them will measure in centimeters. This is uh, almost 210 millimeters or 21 centimeters. I'm going to get down a little closer here and I'm just measuring to the bottom of that meniscus. Remember the curve on the solution. Okay, I'm measuring to the bottom of that and actually as I look at that it looks like it's about about one mark down below that 210 so that would make it 209 I'm going to call it 209.0 millimeters. I'm going to write that down. That will give me an idea of how much lower the pressure is in here. Okay. Obviously, we need temperature and volume also. So those two measurements we just made will help us with pressure. For temperature, surprise, surprise, we've got a thermometer. We're going to read that off on my thermometer right here, reading looks like 20.0 degrees. You need one decimal point on that, that temperature reading. That's a reasonable room temperature. A little cool. Normally this room's around 22, but uh, looks like we're a little cooler today. Might be on your lab day as well. So 20 degrees Celsius for our temperature, and I'm going to assume that the temperature of this water is the same as the temperature of the gas inside my udiometer because this is at room temperature, this is at room temperature, this is at room temperature. I'm just hoping everything's at the same temperature. I've got to assume that because I have no way of measuring this temperature directly. What I can measure directly is the volume of my gas. Remember, way up at the top starts at zero. Down here, my solution level is between 29 and 30. Okay, 29's at the top, 30 is down below the solution line. So. I'm going to read this as 23 point, uh, looks like a 0.58, I think I would give it. You want two decimal places. Again, you have to estimate that last one. So 29.58, just a, a bit past the halfway mark there, not quite to the next line. So that's my volume measurement. And we've gone over in class, or we will go over in class while your, your samples are reacting. We'll be going over how to use those numbers to get a final answer. Your goal, of course, tell me the original mass of that magnesium, which 
appears to be no more. It's dissolved. It's reacted with the hydrogen, with the hydrochloric acid, generated hydrogen gas. So the number of moles of hydrogen gas in here will give us number of moles of magnesium, and we'll be getting to from there the mass of the magnesium. Okay, whoever comes closest, remember, you get a prize, a sweet, sweet victory. So let's go for it.